Is enough enough? Sunday's race, a lasting image. What is going on? Lauren Shahadi here with you. Glad to have you here for our NASCAR recap. And we've clearly got some rehashing to do. Let me set the stage for you. If you didn't get to watch, Carl Edwards began his charge to the front with nine laps to go at Talladega Super Speedway. He never expected to end up airborne, upside down, sheet metal spewing behind him as his car sailed into the safety fence. The fence held. Edwards returned safely to the racing surface, only this time seven people were hurt. And one of the lasting images of Sunday's race will be the spectator strapped to, the, uh, to a stretcher before she was airlifted to a hospital after debris from Edwards' last lap crash with winner Brad Keselowski sailed into the grandstands. Edwards climbed from the fiery wreckage and crossed the finish line on foot, was thankful it wasn't wor worse. Pete Pistoni, our NASCAR expert, was here. He has all the answers. Pete, Sunday's race clearly spectacular in many ways, from the tight racing to the unbelievable finish. But, but many think it's time for a change at Talladega in the name of safety. Do you agree? I wholeheartedly agree, Lauren. You know, we have uh, lived through this now for literally almost 40 years. Since the racetrack was built, uh, it has been too fast for NASCAR stock cars. NASCAR put these restrictor plates to lower the speeds and try to make the racing safer, but what they have done is made it more dangerous because the cars are just too bunched together. And what you just described there that happened on that last lap on Sunday was probably one of the more frightening things I've ever seen covering and being around the sport my whole life. Uh, another maybe 20, 30 feet higher, and Carl Edwards' car would have sailed into the grandstands, and we would have been talking about a major catastrophe. Uh, all they could do, Warren, is really go in there and reconfigure the racetrack. They would have to tear down the, the banking and the turns and make it flatter to slow these cars down. And unless they're willing to do that, I think every time we go to Talladega, we are just going to be teetering on the edge of a possible tragedy. Pete, does some of the blame lie with the drivers? What about them? Do they need to take some of the responsibility for the wrecks in that accident? I think they absolutely do, and I think that's a very good point that you brought up. There's too much aggression going on with these drivers. They have to be more patient, and I think, you know, you can watch that replay a hundred times, and there will be Carl Edwards fans who will say that Brad Keselowski got into Carl Edwards. The other side of the fence will be Carl Edwards came down on Keselowski. The bottom line is, at the end, they're all going to try to win, so I think all of that patience and and the passive aggressiveness goes out the window. But I think when you look back at some of the big accidents that we had, 14 cars early on, 10 cars later on, a lot of it could have maybe been saved if drivers would have used their head a little bit more. Of course, bottom line is that it happened and it could potentially happen again. Keselowski became the 10th different driver to win his first cup race at Talladega. How much will this do for his budding career, Pete? Well, I think it just kind of expedites what we kind of knew what would happen with Brad Lauren. He was already going to go up to Hendrick Motorsports and run full-time in the Spring Cup Series, maybe as early as next year if they could get Mark Martin to get out of the car. But the way Mark's been going, I wasn't so sure about that. Now he becomes a Spring Cup winner, and as you said, only his fifth start. I think that obviously opens a lot of people's eyes, and even if Rick Hendrick doesn't have a seat for him in the next year or two, if Martin decides to stay, I think there'll be a lot of Spring Cup Series owners who would like to put Brad in their cars. And of course, he drives for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Nationwide Series and is doing a pretty good job there, so the young Michigan driver certainly has an upside to his career going on right now. That is a true statement, and you mentioned Hendrick Motorsports. Of all the teams that had bad days Sunday, Pete, they had an almost disastrous race. How frustrated were they? They were very frustrated, and again, every one of their drivers, Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin getting taken out in that first accident on lap seven, and then Jimmy Johnson later on, uh, basically come out and saying that racing at Talladega just sucks. I mean, they have just had nothing but trouble down there lately, and they're very strong cars. Um, it, you know, it's not devastating because Jeff Gordon only lost the point lead by five points. Now, Kurt Busch, who came home six in a car that looked like it won the demolition derby at the local short track, somehow took over the point lead. But I know the Hendrick guys are happy to get out of uh, Talladega. Dale Jr. did finish second, so there was a little bit of a saving grace there. But I know that that whole team is looking forward to going on to Richmond next Saturday night. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's always next race, and hopefully it will be more safe. Peeper Stoney, thanks for joining us. Talk to you later, Lauren. All right, everything NASCAR right here on the site. I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk real soon.